Hey YouTube, Bob here. Welcome to World of Nintendo. I've got a lot more content like this on the way, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me know what you think. Here we go! In this edition of Nintendo Unboxed, we're going to be taking a look at The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, released in 1992 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is not only my favorite Zelda game, but one of my favorite games of all time. Really a big fan of the original 2D style Legend of Zelda games. It's not to say I don't enjoy the 3D ones, but this is definitely my favorite Legend of Zelda game. So we're looking uh, at the U.S. NTSC release uh, that uh, has a little bit of a uh, plain packaging here. Just a gold background, which is appropriate because uh, that's kind of what we had going on with the original Legend of Zelda and Adventure of Link titles on the Nintendo Entertainment System. But I know uh, back when I was 12 years old, eagerly awaiting this game, I was also hoping very much that the cartridge would be gold colored but unfortunately that was not the case we'd have to wait uh, until the collector's edition of legend of zelda ocarina of time for the n64 to get another gold cartridge but regardless of the color of the cartridge the game inside is absolute perfection definitely my favorite so let's take a look and see what we have here with this release. Uh, we've got the, this is the first time we would see kind of this uh, established logo for Legend of Zelda with the sword through the Z that has followed uh, each title for the most part uh, ever since just with the uh, the different you know subtitle of the game below. So that was the first time we would see that design aesthetic. We see it repeated here without the sword on the first long side. On this short side, same thing. And we're going to see some repeats here on the subsequent long and short sides. But on the back here, as was typical with Super Nintendo Entertainment System releases, we've got four screenshots of the game and then a synopsis here. So The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Fantasy and reality collide in a land of enchantment. Venture back to Hyrule and an age of magic and heroes. The predecessors of Link and Zelda face monsters on the march when, menacing, when a menacing magician takes over the kingdom. Only you can prevent his evil plot from shattering the land of Hyrule. So right away, you know, right down to the title, A Link to the Past. At the time, this is what we understood was the earliest point in the Zelda timeline. In your quest, you'll venture into twisting mazes, dungeons, palaces, and shadowy forests. Test your mettle with mighty swords and magical weapons. Or heft a boulder and hurl it at your enemies. If the going gets tough, dive into a river. You can swim to escape. Learn powerful spells, locate magical artifacts, and solve the mysteries of the evil magician and the hidden realm of Hyrule. This exciting Super NES sequel to The Legend of Zelda and The Adventure of Link uses 16-bit power to create a quest so colorful and detailed you don't just play it, you live it. And I actually think that was one of the slogans that they used in uh, a TV commercial for the game. So it includes battery backup to save your progress. And much like uh, my Super Mario Kart game from 1992, this original battery is, uh, still has my, uh, my first save from beating the game, which has a, um, <laughs> an embarrassing 205 deaths recorded on it. Because uh, a little feature of this game, uh, once you did beat it, it would give you a number. And that was the number of times you had to continue after dying. So 205 here. That was my first time through. So let's take a look and see Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This is an earlier Super Nintendo Entertainment System game, released less than a year after the console had been out. So we're going to see that original design of the cartridge. Let me be sure I get all of the contents out here. There we go. We'll actually take a look at those first. So the first thing, I brought light to the dark world. We're seeing this a lot, uh, this super, uh, this uh, Nintendo Power, uh, rather, uh, ad here in a lot of the um, Super Nintendo games of the time. So thanks to Nintendo Power, I was able to beat Bowser. Here, though, we've got uh, an issue featuring an NES game. But right away, 
Conquer the Perils of Hyrule with a free Zelda Link to the Past player's guide. Looks like the cover art had not yet been finalized, so they're not featuring that yet. Seeing all that gold, it actually kind of looks more to me like an Ocarina of Time, but it is a Link to the Past. So again, you can sign up by calling this number or sending in this registration form. So you can get secrets you'd never find on your own. They're all in your free player's guide. So moving on to the poster, this poster I also have featured in my Super Mario Kart unboxing. Uh, it has a list of all of the, uh, the launch titles and then on the back of the poster here, while the ones included with the hardware typically show you how to hook up the console is kind of a quick reference, this one has an ad for Nintendo Power two issues featuring Super Mario 3 and Batman, which would be two Nintendo Entertainment System games. So that's the poster included. The other thing that we have that's not as quite of much interest is the standard consumer precautions booklet. So these are the interesting pieces of documentation included with the U.S. version of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. We have a map and then we have The Legend of Zelda Top Secrets. Messages from, let's see if I can do this, Sahasrala. <laughs> My friends and I, we never knew how to say it. We'd always call him Shalala. So Sahasrala, I think Sahasrala. Rala. There we go. Or I prefer Shalala. This particular um, copy of it I have is actually sealed with the Triforce sticker. And as a collector, I of course don't care to break that seal, but you can definitely uh, search for scans of this uh, on the internet to see what the contents were. But it does say, this booklet contains the answers to some of the toughest puzzles that you will encounter during your quest as the legendary hero of Hyrule. You should consult this booklet only as a last resort. At first, you should always trust in your potential to be the legendary hero and try to solve the game on your own. So even at this point, we're second console generation into Legend of Zelda, still not quite trusting us over here in the United States to be able to figure out the puzzles. Because uh, I know this type of thing was not included with the Japanese game. But that's okay. I did not open my copy. I did not want to break that seal. The other thing we got is kind of a help here was the map. And I do believe it's double-sided. We'll take a look and see what we have on both sides. So on the first side here, we've got the Hyrule Overworld Lore. Enter the fantasy world of Hyrule. So we've got kind of a watercolor looking map of the overworld, in the light world that is, because as you know this game has the light world and dark world mechanic going on. So a full color illustration of the entire map here, and then some little uh, in, uh, inlays here on the map of some points of interest. We've got Spectacle Rock, Follow Map to Treasure, Hidden Caves, One Way Doors, Listen to your elders, like Shalala. Magical transports. So, just some points of interest there on this map. Then as you turn it over, looks like the first three dungeons. We've got dungeon lore on this side. The Eastern Palace, the Desert Palace, and then the Mountain Tower. Looks like you've got the complete maps of those first three dungeons, which was really nice. So even if you didn't break the seal on this Top Secrets pamphlet here, you still did get quite a bit of help uh, in the form of this map, which was kind of a nice touch. Then they let you know, enter the Dark World next. But of course, you'd have to defeat Aghanim in Hyrule Palace. So another dungeon awaits that is not listed on this map here. So that was included along with the instruction booklet, of course. So, pretty standard issue here. Got the black background on the instruction manual. Always love this artwork. This is the artwork that was featured on the cover of the Japanese version of the game, which I prefer quite a bit to the uh, simple gold that we got here in the United States. But, oh well, at least it's in the documentation in some form here. So here we've got lengthy backstory here about the legends of Hyrule. This is where it all began. And then, of course, um, 
Ocarina of Time would expand on this greatly, letting us know about the, uh, the three goddesses here. So I'm not going to read all of this since it's so lengthy, but I will show each page. So if you care to read it, you can pause the screen, hopefully and be able to read that text. Otherwise, of course, all of these manuals are available online. So then there's the end, the prologue. Your quest is the legendary hero. A little bit more of a backstory there. You've got Link and Princess Zelda. Always love the artwork in this game. Very beautiful color illustrations. Title screen, and then the name registration. Another nice feature about this continuation of the Legend of Zelda series is you could uh, name your player. However, unlike in the first game, if you name him Zelda, you don't open up a second quest. So, viewing the main and the sub-screen, what's going on on all of your screens here, if you were to push start, so you can access your, your inventory there. What functions are mapped to each controller button? We got the regional matching here of the US Super Nintendo controller. How to move your character. It was very nice to finally be able to move Link in eight directions instead of just four that we had in the original Legend of Zelda. Really added to the quality of life experience here in this game. Plus, Link could do uh, so many other things lifting and throwing, swimming grasping and pulling. You could push in The Legend of Zelda, the original one, but you couldn't uh, pull necessarily. So, B button, how you could charge your sword and do the spin attack. They called it the whirling blade technique. That was the first time that you could do that, as well as the dash attack. Really made you able to get to places quicker. And just like in the first game, if you had full hearts, uh, your sword would shoot a beam out of it. So the Y button, using the weapons that you set to the Y button. So many different weapons here. A criticism of the game is some of them, just like the ones uh, mentioned right here, Staff of Burna and Magic Cape, those really aren't used quite as much as some of the other ones. So some of the items' usages were a little bit underdeveloped in this game, if you were going to levy a criticism to it. So, viewing the map screen, some very neat Mode 7 effects as the map would uh, kind of magnify and you could zoom around on it. Difference between the light world and the dark world. It is just a palette swap at a glance, but the geography and the locations of things uh, had definitely changed quite a bit. So, a lot more than just a simple palette swap, although it would appear that's what was going on at a glance. How you could level up your sword here, the different types of things that gave Link access to new areas like the gloves and the flippers. Ending and saving the game. This was a nice improvement here. That This uh, save feature wasn't hidden uh, beneath uh, code using the second controller like in the first game. All you had to do was hit select. Life and magical power. That was a new mechanic introduced here, the magic meter. Although, no, there was, there was a version of that in Adventure of Link, now that I think about it. But lots of different types of potions here, one for magic, one for life, and then one for both. Lore of Hyrule. Points of interest, slashing bushes, that was first introduced here, collecting your rupees, different denominations. I think this is the first time we'd see that many den denominations of rupees. Shops, fortune teller, smithy shop, pond of happiness for upgrading things, transporting yourself via the whirlpools, and the magical warp tiles between the light world and the dark world. How to navigate the dungeons. Your main weapon that you would find in the big chests and the magic or big key that you would need to unlock it. Uh, this Zelda game has pretty much the same. Uh, every time you get the big key, you have to read through the same text. <laughs> Towards the end of the game, it kind of gets to be like, yeah, I know what this is. It's the big key. But um, Zelda games are always guilty of that, kind of holding your hand throughout the entire thing, reminding you of things you know. Here's the map screen for the dungeons. Very detailed. A lot of them uh, had multiple floors. First floor, second floor. This one is a short one with just two floors. 
So the different things you'd encounter in the dungeons, keys and pots, and then those crystals that would make the blocks raise or lower depending on the color. Here's all your items. Quite a few in this game. But yeah, the staff, the staff of Samaria was used quite a, uh, a lot in the Turtle Rock dungeon, but outside of that, uh, wasn't used too much. And then the staff of Burna, even less. The medallions were quite nice there. I always enjoyed uh, that effect there. It was, felt quite epic when you would unleash the power of the Bombos, the Aether, or the Quake. And then part 10, a little bit more of the story here. Sending you off on your journey as your quest begins. And then going back on a brief uh, bestiary of Hyrule. Got the Stalfos, Ball and Chain Trooper, Gibdos, bringing over the names from the original Legend of Zelda. Along with some new ones, we've got Geldman, Hinox, Snapdragon, Helmosaur, and then the Wizrobe made its way back from the original Legend of Zelda. Then we've got the 90 day limited warranty here. So that is the extensive instruction booklet for The Legend of Zelda. So then taking a look at the cartridge itself. Like I said, this is one of the earlier games released for the system. So we've got the original cartridge design that worked with the locking mechanism with the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And uh, this game included a dust cover because it wasn't until about 1994 that Nintendo stopped providing the dust covers with Super Nintendo Entertainment System games. And although I much prefer the design of Super Famicom cartridges, at least with the US version, we do have end labels for the games. So kind of a trade-off there for this blocky aesthetic. So there you have The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video and will stay tuned for all the other content that I'm going to have for you here at World of Nintendo. So until the next one, take care.